there is what the Bible calls a good man. You know when the Bible talks about a good man, it's comparing him with the other men who don't qualify to be good men. And the Bible gives characteristics of a good man. But I want to share only one this morning. Hallelujah. From Proverbs chapter 13 in verse 22. When we talk about a man in this case, we are not necessarily referring to a male figure, but we are referring to a human being. Now the Bible, the Bible, you know, is not a book for everyone, but it's a book that is ordained for those who have made up their minds to subscribe to it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now that Bible in the book of Proverbs chapter 13 verse 22 gives at least one characteristic of who a good man is. And it's actually trying to tell us that you cannot know a good man until he departs. You cannot just be a good man when you are still around. You become a good man when people have your story. Proverbs 13 is a legacy. It's explaining who a good man was. You will get to know who a good man was by being able to see what he has left behind for the people he produced. A good man is not a man who just produces. It's not just a man who has children. A good man is one who leaves something for his children. Praise God. Are we there all of us? Where? Huh? Proverbs 13 22 Can someone read for us If you have an IV Or any other version Yes please You and you Now read the, those who have Bibles I also have phone And I ignored it A good person is an a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. In other words, a good person, you can tell a good person by looking at the grandchildren. Proverbs 13.22 is talking about a man whose age is advanced. He has grown over time. He has become an old man and probably he has departed. He has gone to be with the, the forefathers. But you can tell that he existed by looking at his grandchildren. You can tell that this man exists. In other words, you can divine a departed man by looking at his grandchildren. What is the Bible saying? The Bible is saying that if you want to be remembered as a good man, you must leave something better behind that explains about your existence at one time. And for the people that are here this morning, a time will come when you will depart. And there are all 
possibilities and the probability that you might be forgotten. People can explain you so easily by looking at your children. But when the Bible is talking about the grandchildren, it means you really worked very hard. That even your grandchildren can be identified with you. Do you know there are areas where even great grandchildren still use the name of their grandfather? And there are places where children don't even use the names of their father, their immediate father, because it was not worthy to be identified with. Believers, believers are not just men. Believers are spiritual men. You must work very hard not to leave your children with just material wealthy. Leave them also with something more that can sustain the material wealth. Believers are not just men. You are not just another man. You are not just another woman. Those people of the world can leave land for their children. They can live wealthy for their children. But much of the wealthy that they have handed over to the next generation has not been able to see the grandchildren generation. Because they only transferred land. They transferred material wealthy. When you transfer material wealthy to your children without spiritual wealthy, that material wealth cannot reach the grandchildren. It will be sold in between. It will be added over to people that are not connected to you. Every spiritual man and every spiritual woman see that before me this morning. If there is any kind of inheritance that you must prioritize, it is to give your children a spiritual inheritance. A spiritual inheritance has capacity to sustain and to maintain material inheritance. We labor so much, but what we labor for never sees the next generation. We are buying everything and we, are, we can't even buy our own clothes. And when you are asked why you can't even afford something for yourself, you say, I'm working for the children. And these children, if you don't give them spiritual inheritance, whatever you are producing cannot see the next generation. Yet, it is the, the, the next generation after your children which will define your labor. Look at all that you have done. And look at your children. Can what you have done be able to reach your grandchildren? You can tell by looking at your, at, at your own children. Are your children a kind of your own? Are they like you? Is it really true that your children can be able to keep what you have labored for, for the grandchildren? Because we can only know you through your grandchildren. If you are suspicious of your children, then I give a recommendation. You have to get back to your knees. If you doubt that like your children can, if you die today, by next month, your children have even sold even the house you, you bought recently. Then therefore you have not made a family. Because if your grandchildren cannot have a test of your labor, you are not a good man. I'm only giving you in some wisdom. 
you've got to rise up again and do something on your knees while you are still alive if you want your labor to be extended to your grandchildren you have got to do something now do something about your children God can change them are you suspicious of your children if the answer is yes what are you doing about it don't ignore them your knees can turn around their life pray for them transfer some spiritual grace pray for your children because it is out of your children that your grandchildren can have an inheritance and unless your grandchildren have an inheritance you are you are not a good man a good man does not leave an inheritance for his children he leaves an inheritance for his children his children much of what we have done does not live beyond the next generation and i know the problem the problem is because the spiritual grace we have and it's when we end and that's a serious predicament if all you are labeling for ends with you then you never lived well if it cannot go beyond you if the prayer you are making this morning cannot go beyond you then it is it can be an accumulated waste of time If you don't believe while you are still alive that your prayer can turn around the next person in your generation then you are, your impact is limited. Just like in the natural world material transfer should extend to the next generation so should it be in the spiritual world. A man called Timothy is a young man. He is a product of the grandmother. The grandmother gave him an inheritance of faith. It went beyond the grandmother. It came to the mother. And because it was an inheritance of faith, it was able to turn around the young man, Timoth. And I can tell you, after Timoth, it must have extended to his grandchildren. In 2 Timothy 1 verse 5. The Bible talks about Timothy. And the mother and the grandmother. They, they knew the secret. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. The apostle Paul. Begins by saying this. Can I read for you? Verse 1. Paul an apostle of Christ Jesus. By the will of God. According to the promise of life, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve as my forefathers did. Paul is not just serving because. He was called on his way to Damascus. He has a record that his forefathers served the same God. He's a grandchild of service to the Lord. I pray that after this prayer this morning you're going to make. Some, an impact will come to your family and turn around your children. And turn around your grandchildren. That even many years to come. One of your grandchildren will say, I am serving the Lord as my grandfather did. I am serving the same God that my father served. Amen. Don't have Christianity that is not beyond you. It should be beyond you. Sit down, please. The apostle is saying this. I thank God whom I serve 
Who is this God that I am serving? I am serving a God that my grandfathers served. And how am I serving him? I am serving him as they did. Creating a generation that is like you is more powerful than creating an inheritance that cannot resemble you. Ask the Lord to create for you a generation that looks like you. Praise God. Amen. With a clear conscience, as night and the day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. Now, as for recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. Recalling your tears. Timothy was crying. But how did he learn this cry? Why was he crying? He was crying because of the burden of the gospel. Not because he was in jail. Not because he was beaten. But how did he learn that you can cry for the souls of other people? He had seen it in the grandmother. She was crying for the salvation of people. The mother was crying for the salvation of people. And Timothy became an example. When they met with Paul, a man with a burden from their forefathers, he was also crying like, God, save my village. God, save my generation. Enable me to accomplish your expectation. Timothy was crying because the mother was crying. Some of us are products of the prayers made by other people. Think about it this morning that in the future you can be able to see your own children become leaders in areas where they are. Wherever your children are, I pray that after today you receive a better report of their service to God and to humanity. Praise God. Recording your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. Number verse 5. I have been reminded of your sincere faith. I have been reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice and I am persuaded now it lives in you also. Hallelujah. For this reason I remind you to fan into flame. The gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise him again. Hallelujah. If you want to sustain your labor beyond your generation, you must labor to ensure that your own children become a copy of your own. Even in your absence, God can turn them if you are persuaded to ensure that they become like you. Even spiritual things can be shared. Spiritual things can be shared. Do not only labor for the things of this world. Also labor to transfer things from above. Don't only say I will transfer fiercos. People who had fiercos and they died. Those fiercos are no more. But people who had Jesus and they died, Jesus is still in their families. Hallelujah. It's a good thing to, to have money. And to give it to the next of kin. People are busy even killing one another. In the name of I am the next of kin. And therefore if I kill him now, the insurance will cover me. Cover you for how long? Can't you be covered by the blood of Jesus? Is it not eternal than insurance? How many people have been given the money and they have no money anymore? How many people had hundreds of acres in settlement and other areas? After they die, immediately their immediate family, because they were never equipped with the spiritual, they begin wrangles and they kill themselves because of the property. I know. I have many acres. Yes, that's okay. Many vehicles. But do you know, if, if we don't give our children Jesus, immediately I depart. The vehicles depart. And the little cash I leave with them will cause their death.
prematurely. Let us not be deceived. The temporal things are not a sustainable inheritance. They give our temporary satisfaction, but our eternal needs are in a spiritual inheritance. You are giving your children an education. That's okay. But how far will it take them? How far? I am always praying on my knees that the members of this church can live beyond me. That this church goes for members can exist beyond my days. Doesn't have to end with me. And I always pray that your eyes and my eyes can be opened so that we know what true inheritance is. And that's what we should give to our children. Praise God. Share your grace. Let people become beneficiaries not of your land and your house and your cars and your money alone. Let them become co-beneficiaries of the grace in your life. Let them have a test of that grace. Don't labor for things which are temporary only. Focus more on how, you know, some of your children cannot even listen to you. If they cannot listen to you now that you are alive, how much will they listen to you when you are dead? Being alive is an opportunity for you to change what you think should be changed. You have got to depart with confidence that there's enough spiritual men and women who can keep the fire burning after your departure. But you have got to do something about it. You have got to pray for them. I want you to specifically to pray for your children if you have been given by God any pray for them. Mention their names in this prayer. Some of these children I'm talking about you have already given up. Some of them are drinking. When you look at the future, it's dark. But the prayer you make can turn around these children and in a few days people will say we never knew you were like your dad. We thought you could die a drunkard. We never knew you could become a preacher. The prayer you are making is not another useless prayer. It's a prayer for both biological and spiritual children turn around. You may not have any at the moment as I speak. But make a prayer that will have impact when these children are realized physically on earth. Please, parents, don't give up on them. You give up on your children, you are giving up on your legacy. A few things might have happened that you overdiced your relationship. But because your relationship with God is intact, you can transfer the same divine relationship with your children. I pray and I request you. To pray for your children. If you have grandchildren. Pray for them. The uselessness. Of material inheritance. Lies. On spiritual. Relaxation. When you spiritually. Relax. Your material possession and inheritance is at risk. But the durability of this spiritual, of this material prosperity lies on how much we concentrate spiritually to protect them. 
you can be sure of that inheritance going to the future. If you do something now, the future is determined today, both physically and spiritually.